Hey everybody, Tyler here. Here's an interview I conducted at Anime NJ 2023 with director, producer, and stunt coordinator Koichi Sakamoto. For Power Rangers fans, Sakamoto-san should need no introduction. A lifelong fan of tokusatsu and Hong Kong action, Sakamoto-san worked on tokusatsu stage shows before he moved to the U.S., where he worked on Guyver, Dark Hero, and then joined Saban Entertainment, first directing battle grid scenes on VR Troopers and then coordinating stunts on Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. He would stay with the franchise until 2009, eventually rising to the role of executive producer. He then transitioned to directing in Japan, first with 2010's Mega Monster Battle, Ultra Galaxy Legend, and then a number of shows and movies, most notably Kamen Rider Forze, Juden Sentai Kyoryuja, and Ultraman Trigger, New Generation Tiga. His new movie, Ninja vs. Shark, is now available in North America through Media Blasters. Thanks to Media Blasters CEO John Cirabella for his help in making this interview possible. Now, with no further ado, let's get to the interview. Yeah, so thank you so much for oh, sitting you. down with us. Sure. Um, first off, how, how have you enjoyed the convention? I had a great time. I had a great time, yes. Because it's my first time almost being in convention for the last 20 something years. So, but I did have a great time meeting people and great atmosphere and good energy and everything. Yeah, I think the last time I saw you in the convention was Power Morphicon back yeah. in 07. Yeah, way uh -huh. back. Way back, way back, yes. Yeah. So, Ninja vs. Shark, congratulations on the movie. Thank you very much, thank you. What was the most fun part of getting to shoot that? Uh, because there's no limitation, because the producer asked me to do whatever I like. Yeah, I mean, the fun part was that, you know, we get to do a lot of, uh, like, a gushing blood shooting now and all the stuff, and because a lot of times that, you know, they don't allow us to do it anymore. But this time the producer said, let's do more, do more. So I had a really great time doing it. And you were out there like in the real water, no tanks or anything, right? No, not at typhoon. all. Yeah. yeah, it's a typhoon time. It's a typhoon season, so we really had a hard time shooting it. But there was a big challenge, but they came out really good. So all the actors had a lot of efforts and stuff. And yeah, it's mm -hmm. good. So somebody pointed out the other day, you have a really distinct style of shooting. How would you describe your style? My style, because you know, I don't really realize, you know, I have my have this thing style, but a lot of people told me that. Uh, because I guess I use certain uh, lenses for angles, like a long lens for a certain cool shots and wide lens for certain dynamic shots. And also that maybe uh, I have tendency to do a lot of uh, uh, guy flying across the room and hit the box or hit the ground and stuff. And, uh, you know, because I got a lot of inspired from the Hong Kong films or like a lot of uh, you know cool action sequences and stuff. So, so um, talk about how like uh, do you kind of approach your shows with kind of fans eye or anything like that? Yeah, because uh, I myself is a big fan of Tokusatsu shows because I you know I was born in 1970, mm -hmm. so I watched a lot of growing up watching a lot of Ultraman, Kamen Rider, Super Sentai for other you know Kaido and a lot of different Tokusatsu was you know, there on the TV series. So that uh, I'm a big fan, still I'm a big fan. So that whenever I shoot Ultraman, I enjoy shooting as a filmmaker, but also I enjoy as a fan too. So I'm getting both at the same time. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think gave Kyoryuja such staying power? Because you went and shot Dino Force Brave, all that, uh -huh. and everybody still loves it to this day. Yeah, uh, Kyoryuja was amazing. So like, uh, uh, you know, uh, because that, what we did was that, uh, Kyoruja, we want to make sure that that's very, very much Super Sentai, which is that, uh, you know, we have to make, we have to make sure we have a uh, henshin sequence. Also, after the henshin, we have a nanori, which is the you know, call-out sequences. Mm -hmm. We don't really want to cut, cut out those sequences. Sometimes that, you know, some Sentai show, they cut out those sequences because they want to move to a storyline. Mm -hmm. But we want to make sure that those sequences uh, exist and also that every time that, you know, shows up. Because like, you know, back in the, uh, when the Super Sentai started out, uh, those sequences are one that kids imitate all the time. So we want to make sure that uh, Kyoruja is something where the kids watch it, they want to imitate it. Right. So on purpose, we want to cut out those sequences. Yeah, it did have a lot of uh, roll call sequences. What, what were your favorite memories of, of shooting on Kyoruja? Uh, uh, you know, it's great cast, because the uh, cast is good atmosphere. They get on so well, then I had a great time. It's like family, you know. We have a lot of different, I mean, they're funny guys too, so that we had a lot, lot of laugh and fun time together. Mm -hmm. And uh, we spent in a whole year together, so it's like it's like, a, it's like one nice family. What is that process like? You know, from beginning to end, like shooting Sentai. Mm -hmm. Like, how long does like it's fifty episodes plus specials, all that? Yeah, does that take up like all the whole year. It's more than a whole year. It's about the thirteen, fourteen months. Because mm -hmm. the fifty episode, almost fifty episode, is the movies and V cinema and all that stuff. So that uh, takes about the fourteen, thirteen to fourteen months. 
Mm -hmm. And when you're the lead director on something like Kyoto Journal mm -hmm. or Forze, uh, what kind of responsibilities do you have? What kind of input do you have into the creative? It's uh, uh, at the very beginning, I sit down with producers and writers and also the sometime toy company to make sure that uh, this is how we want to approach the new seasons. Because of, uh, the toy company suggests a certain you know, new, new way of introducing toys and also how we're going to use it. Also, the producer said that this is a concept we want to make. Let's say the Kyoruja, it's a dinosaur as a concept. Mm -hmm. So how would you want to combine dinosaurs with this, like a samba rhythm, you know, the music mm -hmm. and all the stuff? And also the lighter work to do uh, the Super Sentai, which is super tough. You know, no one can beat it because uh, before to become Sentai in the Kyoruja, you have to beat the, uh, the Megazord first, mm -hmm. then become the, uh, uh, this is the proof of becoming the Kyoruja. Mm -hmm. So that uh, even though they feel more for itself, they're very strong. So that, uh, that kind of concept stuff, we all sit down and talk together, then uh, we decided you know, how we're going to do it. Then uh, I had to do the first four episodes to establish the relationship between the characters. So that uh, you know, I had a lot of uh, influence and I had a lot of a say to it. Mm -hmm. um, when you work in Power Rangers, they mm -hmm. grouped you in kind of late in the process. Mm -hmm. um, what, like, what was the most interesting uh, kind of gift that Bandai gave you in terms of a gimmick that you could use, like for example, the jungle master mode uh -huh. allowed you to do a lot more wire work in uh -huh. the later half of the jungle yeah, period. Yeah. Uh -huh. What was the most interesting um, tool that the footage gave you when you were trying to put together sequences for Power Rangers? Well, for the uh, for, uh, for, as far as for toy companies, mm -hmm. well, in terms of like the things that that were like the, the power ups and what have yeah. you. That, okay. Uh, what was the most interesting thing for you to be able to work with? Well, for the Power Rangers, what we had the battleizers. Mm -hmm. We started with Power Ranger in space. Because something that's something they, they don't have in a, in a super synthesis. Right. That's the only thing we have. I mean, we had a, in the Power Ranger had a battleizer and also motorcycles. Because a lot of times those, those two they don't have it in Japan. Mm -hmm. So that uh, had a lot of total creative creative control. That you know what we want to do and also that we want to make sure that those sequences come out really well. So that we take our time, which is the two days of shooting sequences and stuff, and three mm -hmm. days of shooting sequences. So that uh, motorcycle action and also the battleizer sequences. Those are ones that we really had a great time. Mm -hmm. and you, you talked a bit about the different kind of work ethic in New Zealand, but you also had local mm -hmm. stunt people in addition to the people from Alpha yeah. and AAC. Mm -hmm. um, talk about trying to get some of those people trained up in the way uh, the Kabuki influenced yeah. style of movement on Power yeah. Rangers. So what we do is before the production starts, we have a training session with the stunt team and also the uh, uh, actors. Mm -hmm. So in the morning, we train with actor for a couple hours. In the afternoon, we have a stunt team training. Uh, Japanese stunt team, New Zealand stunt team, we train together. Mm -hmm. So that uh, New Zealand stunt team knows exactly what we want. You know, also we, we, we can you know, imitate the movement, so they try to get the same rhythm. Uh, so we work together really well. So that it, the key is that we can practice together, then also we get to know each other, mm -hmm. become great friends, so that we can work together really well. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. And a lot of guys in New Zealand, they're very keen to learn new style, so it helped out really well too. Yeah. Now, back in the day, the show would, of course, hire mm -hmm. people who, actors who mm -hmm. were experienced martial arts, uh -huh. gymnasts, what have you. That was less the case later. Were there any actors who, like, you know, weren't, like, obviously trained in martial arts who surprised you with what they were able to pull off? Yeah, because uh, uh, during the training sessions, because even though some guys that doesn't have martial arts background, they're very talented athletes, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, uh, they have natural talent for it. So that we, we train for two weeks every day pretty much straight before the production starts. But uh, a lot of guys that catch up, you know, the techniques and the tricks and stuff like that, and they put the acting into it. So it makes it really believable, you know? So that uh, I was amazed for certain guys too, so. Mm -hmm. Was there anybody in particular who really impressed you? Uh, you know, the guy from Ninja Stone, Pua, uh, he was very, very talented. He's got the very good, you know, physique and nasty bodies and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's very energetic. So that uh, everything we teach, he can just do on the spot. You know, it's like, you know, I, oh, I never tried this before, but try it, try it. He tried it once, he done it, he nailed it. So it's very amazing, yes. Mm -hmm. And we heard the story uh, the other day uh -huh. about uh, Jason Frank uh -huh. and, and Johnny in the woods. Uh, what, what are your memories of working with Jason Frank? Well, Jason is always an energy, energetic guy because every time we come up to the set, he says, oh, I want to do this, I want to do this. He suggests that, he says, I want to do it this way. Koichi, koichi, this is, let me do this, let me do this. So that, uh, you know, it's fun. It's always fun working with him. 
because uh, we come up with great ideas and he come up with ideas and uh, you know so you know we chat so many fights in together so it was, it was really fun working with Mighty Morphin Time or the Z or the Turbo mm-hmm. then when he come back for the Dan Thunder you know we thought that he's it'd be older so that he's more the mature now but when he come down to the fight sequence same same Jason Franks he's like okay let's do this let's do this but uh, he you know it's never changed and we did a good a great time yes mm-hmm. You talk about like the, the differences in like what they call things in Japan mm-hmm. when you know you were filming there. Mm-hmm. Was there anything else that you kind of had to adjust to when you started shooting on Sentai Kamen Rider Ultraman? Uh, yeah, and also that uh, because of the uh, uh, in the U.S. Uh, there's like certain jobs for uh, certain people. Let's mm-hmm. say that uh, uh, you know the the first AD or second AD, you know they do nothing but you know command and moving people around and stuff like that. They don't do push the camera uh, dolly or they don't do mm-hmm. you know, sort of things. But in Japan, assistant directors not just in the command scenes, but the, uh, they do push the dolly, camera dolly. Mm-hmm. Also, they do the slate for the cameras. So there are different jobs. So I was very confusing first, but now I got used to you know both sides. Yeah, what in your mind makes a good fight scene? A uh, good fight scene is because you know how well it's choreographed and also rhythm wise. Because uh, I like to see that uh, fight scene with a different kind of rhythm, so that you don't get bored. If it's same go same rhythm over and over, boom, 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 you get the balls. So that uh, I like to choreograph the fight scene with a different kind of rhythm. But also the angle, you know, you have to pick and choose the angle because I want to make sure that uh, certain techniques you can see what's going on. Because uh, some uh, some fight scenes you can't really tell what's going on. So that you know, I mean, one thing is that to hide the skill of the actors, but I like to see that uh, what's going on on the camera wise. So I mm-hmm. make sure that in the camera angle shows that what's uh, how the fight scene going. Mm-hmm. The people at Toei, of course, were familiar with your work before mm-hmm. you started actually working for them. But did you encounter any resistance to bringing the kind of style you shoot things to Japan? Oh, uh, there's not, not not really resistance because uh, because I was working with Toei prior to that as a producer. Because I was a producer for Power Rangers, mm. I was working with a producer on the Japanese side. As a producer, you know, uh, we, we worked together. But I was first time working as a director for Toei. Uh, they didn't have resistance, but they just said that you know, uh, you know, we want to we hire you because we want to make sure we want to do the, like what you do in the Power Rangers, like a motorcycle action with the wire gags and all mm-hmm. that stuff. So they actually they really helping me to bring my stuff to the Toei side, mm-hmm. and that actually did really, you know was you know great change I think. Mm. When everything happened, when Power Rangers wrapped up, mm-hmm. when RPM wrapped up, mm-hmm. was there any doubt that going to Japan was going to be your next step? Because uh, I thought that I just going to go to Japan to do the Ultraman movie and come back. But uh, I, instead of you know, coming back, I keep getting offers from Japanese companies. I ended up staying in Japan from 2009 on to even right now. So, so that uh, it was interesting in a change because I never thought that I was going to go back to Japan, you know, walk, walk over there, mm-hmm. you know. But your home base has still been the U.S. and all yes. the time, correct? Yes. Um, talk about the like, what's that stress like commuting basically to Japan for however long to work on this, and you know, having to only be able to go back home every mm-hmm. so often. Well, the thing is that, you know, the one thing is, you know, good that I work in all the time, but the, the one, on the other hand, I don't get to see my family too much because my daughter lives in New York, my son and wife lives in LA, so I only get to see them once in a while because, like, maybe my, my wife and the son, they come visit me every year, every summertime, but uh, my daughter, she works here in New York, so that we, our schedule doesn't match up too well, mm-hmm. so that I don't get to see her more many, many years. Mm-hmm. So that's something downside of that, you know. Yeah, that has to... Do you try to like stay connected through phone and all that? Yeah, uh, we have you know Skype and yeah. stuff like that. So we do have a, a phone connections or you know, like, a, a, like a FaceTime kind of deal. So that otherwise you know forget the, how we look at each other and stuff. And I know the border situation was weird during COVID too. Yeah, yeah. So that time was very very tough because it's like you know we're almost like more than half, three years so we didn't get to see each other. So mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, some fans have. I asked around you know, before this interview mm-hmm. what people wanted to know, and um, going back to RPM, uh-huh. uh, I think you might be able to see what this question is going. Uh-huh. There was a mid-season change, and there's been a lot of rumors as to what led to that, and is there anything that you're able to tell me about what happened? What well, mid-season changes? Which I think so. Hmm? The executive producer's uh, dismissal. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. 
Well, no, it's, uh, uh, it's just, uh, uh, I guess, the, you know, the, um, what you call, uh, I guess, the, uh, <laughs> uh, how would you say, uh, I guess, difference of opinion, I guess, you know, like... Uh, uh, creative differences? Yeah, creative differences, I think. Then, uh, I mean, we do have uh, different producers over, you know, mm -hmm. here and there and stuff like that. So that, you know, uh, you know, Disney wanted to do certain things and producer wanted to do certain things. And uh, sometimes you know, the, the idea matches or sometimes doesn't have the same ideas and stuff. And so that, so that uh, people go on and off. So Yeah, like the rumors that were in the community were things like budget, what have, or budget or or delays or mm -hmm. what have you, so it's just creative differences? Yeah, yeah, so it's not, it's not, mm -hmm. it's not less negative, it's not, you know, we have all good relationships all the time, so. It, it all sounded so dramatic when people were spreading yeah, rumors, yeah. So. so. it's not that, uh, it's not that, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's actually, that's actually very clarifying. <laughs> um, so, uh, there have been a lot of people who've cycled through Power Rangers and uh -huh. Tokusatsu, uh -huh. young actors who, especially in the Japanese side, mm -hmm. gone on to do great things. Mm -hmm. Uh, who are alumni of whom you're most proud? Well, because of, uh, you know, because I still get contact with uh, Fukushi Sota from Foze, because mm -hmm. after he finished Foze, he's a huge star now in Japan. And, uh, but we still, you know, keep a, keep a friend and we keep contact and stuff. So mm -hmm. that, I mean, everybody, you know, Fukushi Sota, like that, and Suda Masaki from Kamen W, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. everybody, you know. So I'm just so proud because these guys, because they're like my students, you know, we spent together for many years, I mean, whole year, and they graduated from Tokusatsu shows to go to different, you know, primetime you know, TV series, or big movies and stuff, and they've become a huge, you know, star. So I'm very, very proud. Mm -hmm. What is the dream project that you like to work on, despite the fact you've already worked on all these iconic franchises? <laughs> what's something that you know maybe got away or something yeah. you'd like to do someday? Well, a dream project will be uh, something that I can create from scratch. You know, Super Sentai, Ultraman, Kamen Rider, all those are great shows. But uh, I just want to do something that I can create from scratch, from, you know, from, uh, from just, the, from, you know, especially for like in Japan, uh, those Tokusatsu shows are quite big. So there's not really other room for other shows. But uh, maybe there's some other room for the uh, other countries. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's say for Asia, for North America, for the European countries. I want to do some. I want to develop something that uh, which is totally new, and uh, I just want to uh, present out to the other countries' kids and stuff. So. Mm -hmm. Now, one of your uh, successors uh, has said that the reason that we don't see many like practical effects on Power Rangers mm -hmm. is because there's like not the time or the two, like permits. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, if you, for example, if Pyro goes off wrong, yeah. you gotta set it again, all that. Yeah. Do you think that uh, practical effects are in any way in danger because of the pressures on time and money? No, it uh, uh, depends on, uh, I mean, the permit is one thing because a lot of places mm -hmm. they don't allow to do a lot of uh, uh, practical pilot effect, like uh, sparks, you know, the explosions and stuff. I mean, sparks, you can still get away a lot of places. I mean, there's a lot of places you can still do the sparks. But the explosion itself is very, very limited. Exactly. Yeah. Sort of abandoned warehouse or lock corridor, the only places we can do explosions. And uh, of course, it takes time. So that, uh, but the thing is, that I'm coming from that stunt background, so that I do like the practical effect. I mean, of course, CG effects are great, but you get a little bit difference of look and also the effect to it. So I use both. You know, as long as I can use the, uh, the you know, pilot effect, explosions, and sparks effect, I try to do as much as I can. So that, uh, as you notice, that you, when you look at my shows, end up being almost same warehouse over and over. Just because that warehouse itself, I can do the big pile effect and stuff. So mm -hmm. I mean, I love doing the practical effect. Mm -hmm. Now I remember back in that first Power Morph kind of movie, T.J. Rotolo, who uh -huh. said that you were doing more setups per day than yes. anybody else in L.A. <laughs> what, what enabled that you know, breakneck pace? Uh, it's just because uh, I don't really, um, you know, uh, uh, I know exactly what I want. So that, let's say I don't have a, 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 the time where I have to think about it and what, what I'm going to do next on the set. Because I you know, prepare a shot list beforehand. I can do, let's do this, let's do this, let's move on to this. I'm doing it, I have a stunt team working with me to prepare for next shot. So that it's not like one shot, okay, let's do the next shot, let's do this, what about this, what about that? We don't have that time for that. So I just do the shot, but while I'm doing it, let's say I'm shooting that Ranger's fight. My stunt team is practicing next Blue Ranger fight. So after we finish that Ranger fight, the Blue Ranger fight moves in, we do Blue Ranger fight. So that we have this te great team are going. So that's how I, you know, I can shoot out a lot of sequences in a short time. Mm -hmm. So after Ninja vs. Shark, what's your next 
uh, big movie project, or is there any in the pipeline? Well, there's a talk, a, lot, a, a few talks are going on right now, and uh, I, I mean, I, it's, it's not has been announced yet, so I can't really tell. But uh, mm -hmm. of course, uh, uh, one of the other goal is uh, uh, to make a sequel for Ninja Warrior Shark, because the Ninja Warrior Shark had a great reaction in Japan. Also, now that you know, after we saw premiere last night, everybody liked it. So hopefully, that's going to be a great reaction for North American release, you know. So maybe you know, in the future, it's Asian release and all the stuff. So we can make it a sequel for that movie, maybe. And I forgot to mention, I noticed like some elements that I kind of recognize from Noboru Yaguchi in terms of the level of <laughs> and the style of <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. So, the, uh, I mean, the, you know, not so much of a uh, uh, Noboru Yaguchi movies, but uh, I was influenced from the uh, Long Wolf on the Curve or the Zatoichi movies, because those movies back in the 70s, you see the actual, the, you know, like, a, you know, you cut off the people's head or arms or legs and stuff like that, and it's split out the broad and stuff. So I was influenced from that back in the 70s movies. Yes. Mm -hmm. What would you say are your other influences besides, you know, Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee, all of that, like, what do you go home, go home and watch? Well, as far as uh, ninja movie goes, I like the Japanese ninja movie in the 80s. Uh, the movie called Iga Ninpocho or the Makai Tensho. Mm -hmm. uh, those are, uh, I think the English title, I forgot the English title of it, but uh, Sanada Hiroki is in uh, those movies too, mm -hmm. so that I grew up watching his movies. And those movies are really good uh, as far as the atmosphere. It's very dark, and also there's some sort of like a, like a it's almost like a horror taste to it. So that I like those ninja movies. So whenever I do uh, like a ninja films or samurai movies, I get influence from those films. Yes. Yeah. Um, Ori, do you have any uh, message for fans? Uh, yes. Um, thank you for watching all our shows, and uh, I hope that you know you know I can keep making you know, make you guys happy or uh, you know just uh, have fun together. And uh, uh, yeah, I'd mean, like to have a, a, a show up again for this commission like this and, uh, and I meet you guys in person, yes. All right, thank you so much. Thank you.